Thank you, Catherine. I'm the guy that's not from Maine. Uh, my farm in Bluffton, Georgia is called White Oak Pastures. It's a <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> multi-generational, multi-species, vertically integrated farm that's been in my family for 153 years. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we are the largest private employer in our county. Uh, we write payroll checks every Friday for $100,000 in one of the poorest counties and one of the poorest states in the union. Uh, I like to think that people who know about our farms think of us as part of the leadership in enriching rural America, in regenerative land management, in helping to mitigate climate change, and also animal welfare. But we're here to talk about the Green New Deal. <clears throat> and I think that most people, certainly I, think of the Green New Deal as the work product of the fresh group of freshmen, congressmen, AOC, and the squad. And uh, I, I am certainly uh, not part of that group. I am too old, too white, too rural, too male, too agrarian, and too southern. And I think that uh, this is where it, it really gets interesting because the Green New Deal is a point where uh, AOC and the squad and Will Harris and White Oak Passes can find some common ground. And I think that's very important. And I hope that it will serve to be uh, a, a, a bit of a uh, an initiative and a bit of legislation that our congressmen can reach across the aisle and make something positive happen with regard to enriching rural America, uh, regenerative land management, climate change, and all these other things that we can agree on. Uh, I guess that's all I got to say, but I do hope that, uh, that this will uh, bring people together. Certainly, we need it in this polarized environment. Thank you all.